Hello and welcome to Nidhrania Game Club. My name is Branislav Berec and you're watching Game in a Nutshell, the series of videos designed for explaining the board game rules. Today we're going to learn how to play Four Gardens, the game for two to four players about building beautiful gardens around Mystical Pagoda, designed by the Czech designer Martin Dolezal, who was kind enough to send me the game and published by Korea Board Games. In Four Gardens, players use cards to build this beautiful garden around the mystical pagoda. They do that to please the gods. The favor of each god is indicated by the position of the markers on the scoring tracks and at the end of the game, the player with the most favor becomes the new ruler of the kingdom. To set the game up, first assemble the pagoda by stacking the floors in a random order. Keep in mind that each player should face one side of the pagoda. Locate the side of the bottommost floor which shows three resources, and then the floor above this bottom floor should show two resources, the next floor should only have one resource, and the last floor should have no resources. So three, two, one, and zero. Then place the scoreboard next to the pagoda, Shuffle all the cards and place them with this landscape side up and draw the first three cards and place them with the groundwork side up. Sort the bonus tiles by their type and create three piles next to the scoreboard with these highest value tiles at the top. Create the general supply of resources nearby. Each player takes one planning tile and four markers of the same color and draws five cards from the deck. Each player can see this groundwork side of their own cards, but keep it secret from other players who can only see this landscape side of the cards. All players place their markers on the number 3 space on each track on the scoreboard, and finally randomly determine the starting player, and that's the end of the setup. In four gardens, players take turns starting with the first player and then go in a clockwise direction. On your turn, you must perform three actions and for each action you have to use one card from your hand. You can choose from four different actions and you can play these actions in any order you want and you can also play the same action multiple times. You may play one card, groundwork side up, into your garden which is the area somewhere in front of you. Or you can discard a card with this pagoda symbol and rotate the pagoda and collect the resources which you can see from your side of the pagoda. Resources are placed into your planning area. When you discard a card with this symbol, you can take any wild resource. You can place that resource either directly on the card or in your planning area. And finally, this card symbol is on every single card in the game and if you discard the card and take that card action, you can reallocate the resources from your planning area to your card or from one card to another card or even from the planning area back to the general supply. When any card in your garden has all the required resources, that card becomes a completed landscape card and you can move your marker one step forward on the track of the same color as the color of the symbol in the top left corner of that card. The position of your markers on each track determines the victory points you gain at the end of the game. The player with the most points at the end of the game is the winner. Now I will explain all four actions in more detail. When you play a card from your hand into your garden, always place it with this groundwork side up. Each card is part of one panorama indicated by the color and these dots in the top right hand corner. There are four panoramas in the game and these dots indicate how many cards form that panorama. The large white dot determines the position of each card in that panorama. Each player can only have one panorama of each color. You can place cards into your garden in any order you want. Here I have started with a green panorama and with a third card from the left. Next, I could place this orange panorama card and again third card from the left. Then I can take another card from the green panorama, this time first from the left and so on and so forth. You can only have one copy of each card from each panorama. 
So since I already have the third card from the left from this green panorama, I may not play another third card from the left from the same green panorama. Obviously the same applies even if that card is already flipped to the landscape side. I can still only have one copy of each card from each panorama. Finally, you can have maximum three cards with the groundwork side up. When you discard the card with this pagoda symbol, first, you must rotate the floor shown on the card with this black color 90 degrees, counterclockwise or clockwise, that's your choice, together with all floors above that floor. Then you will collect the resources shown on your side of the pagoda and either going top down or bottom up. In this case, you have to start at the top and go down to the bottom. You place all those resources into your planning area. You may not choose which resources to collect. You have to start with the top floor. So here you would take two water drops and then you have to continue until you take all the resources or until your planning area becomes full. Then place the card to the discard pile. When you discard a card with this symbol, you may take any one resource and either place it in your planning area or directly on one of the cards on the space with the matching symbol. All cards in the game have this card symbol. That means you can discard any card from your hand to reallocate the resources. You may move the resources from your planning area to any of your cards or from one card to another card or even from your planning area back to the general supply. That's the only way how to discard unwanted resources. Anytime you place all the required resources on a card, discard those resources to the general supply and flip the card to the landscape side. Now, as a reward, look at the color of the symbol in the top left hand corner and move your marker one space forward on the track of the corresponding color. If the card has this wild symbol, you can move your marker on any track. Now, if you have some other cards in the same panorama with this landscape side up, gain the reward from those cards again. So in this example, I would take two red symbols as a reward, which means I can move by two spaces on the red track. If you complete multiple cards during the same turn, you can resolve them in any order you want. So when resolving this panorama, I would be able to move one space on the blue track, another space on the blue track, and then on the purple track. When your marker is already on the 10th space of the track and you would have to move forward, instead, move markers of all other players one space back. If you would push the markers from this two space away from the scoreboard, those markers would be eliminated for the remainder of the game and they would never get back to the track. Finally, if you complete the whole panorama, like in this case, take the topmost tile of your choice. When you take this tile, you can increase your planning area by one space. When you choose this kind of tile, you can take any four resources immediately and either place them in your planning area or directly on your cards. When you take this tile, you will simply score that many victory points at the end of the game. Each player can have maximum one reward tile of each type. After taking three actions, refill your hand back to five cards. You can take cards from the top of the deck or you can take cards from the display. You can only refill the cards in the display once your hand is back to five cards. If the draw deck runs out, reshuffle the discard pile and create the new draw deck. When any player completes certain number of landscape cards, eight in a four player game, nine in a three player game, and 10 in a two player game, finish the current round so that each player has the same number of turns, and then the game is over. Calculate the victory points from each track so in this example, yellow player would get 6 plus 5 plus 5 plus 0 points. Add the victory points from the reward tiles and the player with the most points is the winner. So that's it. That's how you play the Four Gardens game. If you would have any questions or comments, please put them into the comment sections below. I'll be happy to answer your questions. If you like the series, please subscribe. My name is Branislav Berec. You've been watching Game in a Nutshell and hope to see you next time.